viewer, you are watching the Big Network, UBC Inspiring Uganda. Welcome to Christian Focus, the show that brings you all that makes news and inspires in the Christian circles. My name is Prince Nick, and I hope you had a great Sunday, and of course, a great service in the morning, wherever you went for worship and praising. And uh, you, 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 are, you, are, you, are, you are in your sitting room, your bedroom, wherever you are, <laughs> trying to find out what have we got to discuss, what have we got to talk about this evening. And on that note, I am humbled and privileged to host a wonderful man of God, and this is none other than uh, Pastor Kaweke Richard Musoke from uh, Zion Awakening Church, Boyogiriri. So we're going to be chatting about a few things concerning what we see going on or transpiring in our communities. Pastor, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, you Prince say Nick. Prince Nick. Yes. yes <laughs> now Thank tell you. me, mm -hmm. how is uh, Zion Awakening Center? Where you're getting? We are doing well and we are blessed Amen. by the Lord. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. And what did you preach about? If you happen to be the preacher this morning at your church. Yes, we, talk, we talked about helping mm. our community mm. being useful mm. to the people who surround us. Wow. Yes. Very inspiring. Mm. But uh, away from that, that you spoke about in the service, have you realized that today people are so much selfish? Yes. And uh, it's like there is a lot of strife in going about our day-to-day -day lives? Yes. And it, uh, is a, it is a common, it is a common disease, yeah, sure. if I may call it. <laughs> it is a disease. Then, of course, moral decadence is on the increase. Exactly. Does the church realize that, that that is happening? And what is the church trying to do about that? Yes, I believe so. The church, the church knows what is taking place, mm. unless the church is not in the community. Mm. But because we are in the community, you are watching. we know whatever <laughs> is taking place. Yeah. So as a church, we can't just be on lookers. Mm. Yes, we have to come in as a church to find a remedy because the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, mm. verse 13, 14, that we are the salt. Mm. We are the light mm. of the world. Mm. So if we keep just on the spectation a point, mm. then we are not doing our work. Mm. But our work, because it is, it is, by the way, it is not, it is, it is, it is, it is not amazing to see that the world is like that. Mm. So we as the church, we are the ones who are supposed to bring back those values back mm. in our society because we are the light okay. and we are the salt of the world. Now, yes. what are the practical things because now you mentioned the, the scripture, Matthew in chapter 5. Mm. That is the scripture. Yes. But I think the practical things that must be done to address this. Is the church having any practical implementations it is doing? Yes. Mm. The church, uh, I've been seeing some churches doing it. We also do it. Mm. We go out in the community. Mm. Uh, we, we try to address the problems which the people in our community find. Mm. The major way we come to rescue our community is by preaching the gospel. Mm. Because the gospel is, uh, is the medicine, mm. if I may say. Mm. The gospel is the medicine to cure all these vices which are in our community. Mm. Yes, without the gospel, no. Okay. <laughs> yes. Now, we say that uh, a lot of selfishness and uh, uh, a lot of strife. Have you tried to discover where this could be coming from? Because I'm so certain, I, I, I believe that the best way to handle any situation is mm. to get to the root cause of the problem and try to handle that. Exactly. Has, uh, has the church, uh, has Zion Awakening Center, has Pastor Kakaweke uh, <laughs> tried to discover what the root cause of what we are seeing is? Yeah, and, uh, yeah. the major problem 
causing all these things, or the source of all these problems, is the family. The family. The family mm -hmm. is the root cause. Once our families are distorted, mm. once our families are as, as, uh, apart, they are not together, we as parents, we don't give time to our children. That is the major cause for all the moral decadence and other vices in our community. The family. Yes. I think I can conquer with you. And uh, recently findings tell us that uh, Uganda could be the youngest country in the world. Mm -hmm. In that, we have a lot of people, a lot of our population, mm -hmm. are young. They are below the age of mature people. So when you talk about the family, mm -hmm. you discover that today many people are becoming fathers, many people are becoming mothers who are not ready for it. Yes. And it probably is. are not giving their children the right mentorship. The problem goes back again to the parents of those parents. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So the, 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 the problem is, uh, is from generation to generation. Mm. We are privileged that some of us were able to be raised by parents who, who had time for us, mm. who could sit down and tell us what to do. But these days, it is a very big problem. Not only in the secular world, if, but even in the, in the, in church. the church itself. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even some, some, some ministers don't have time for their families. Mm. So this kind of thing also tries, it also goes. But we as a church, we're saying we should come back. Mm. Yes, mm. we should come back as parents and do the needful. Mm. Yes. That's what I was asking, in fact, a few min uh, minutes ago. Practical things that the church should do because you know talking about it and citing the bible is okay but there are a few things that we must be doing so are there tangible things that you think you are implementing probably at your church and people can borrow from you or you are not yet doing but things can be done then we can share them on national television so that our viewer can okay this day we may be so busy mm. once we are so busy even in the church then that is a big problem. But what we should do, we should create time. Mm. Even just being there in your home, telling your children, go and do this, do this, do that. That alone, it may look as though it, it doesn't have any impact, but somewhere it gives a child a sense of being uh, humble. Mm. Yes. Humble to hear what the parent is telling you, mm. and then you comply. Mm. Because now you find that uh, in our society, people uh, don't want to comply mm. to instructions. Mm. Yes. Mm. And, uh, you know, it begins when somebody is young, mm. but then it goes on growing. Grow. Yes. Yeah. And uh, we find that we have uh, people who are rebellious in society. Mm. Mm. Yes. But the root cause is, is, the, from, family. is the family. Now, there's something that uh, I've come to realize that also may be affecting us. I hope the church can have something to do about it. Mm. There are some policies, I can say political or government policies, that give some kind of big liberties and freedoms to children. Yes. And uh, they, they, in fact, they take out some responsibility in courts, that take away, <laughs> I put in courts, some responsibility of the parent from, from the kid. Yeah. Could that be also another aspect that is contributing to what we are seeing today? Uh, people think, uh, government, you know, mm. you know, there are a few things that parents should be doing, but the policy of government says, no, 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 don't go big on that one, go slow. Yeah, surely. Yeah, and and how, how are we going to let this between the church and, and, and the policies? Okay, at mm. some point, I may, I may agree with the government mm. uh, because... Again, as I said, the problem is with the family. Mm. You may find a parent who is so rough on children because of the way that parent was raised. Mm. He grew up from a very cruel family. So because he, he was helpless those days, mm. so now all the anger now <laughs> is transferring it to <laughs> his kids. children. Yes. So if the government comes in at that point, mm. I agree. Mm. But at, at, the, at, uh, at the same time, you as a parent, 
These children are your letter. Mm. They are the letter which speaks a lot about you. Mm. What people can't read that is happening in your life, they will read from your children. Mm. So if your children are misbehaving in society, if your children cannot become responsible people, the blame comes back to you yeah, sure. as, as a parent. Mm. So we as a church, we have to tell people we must give time mm. to our families mm. and instruct them in a godly manner, mm. in a godly way. Mm. In the, because the Bible is very clear. Uh, we are not supposed to be so harsh on children, but at the same time, mm. we don't have to hold them with gloves. Mm. Yes, we have to hold them responsibly because these are the people who are going to, to stand in our gap after we've, after we've left. I can see, Pastor Kaweke, you are calling a lot parents to have time yes. for, for their kids. Mm -hmm. I think that is the best way to go about it. Mm -hmm. However, there are people whose way of lifestyle may not actually allow them to have that time. Probably the kind of jobs they do we won't allow them to have some time with mm -hmm. their kids. Now, that's why now I think another person should come in. And now for your case, the church. Mm. For, for such situations, what are the practical things that should be put into place to help such children and their parents who okay. cannot have time for each other? Okay. Uh, I believe uh, that uh, a parent like that one mm. goes to work because of his children. Exactly. If the children were not there, mm. could be would remain home, mm. relax, and so on. But because he or she has a responsibility, mm. he has to wake up every time and go and uh, hustle with life mm. and get something to bring back home. Mm, yeah, sure. But at the same time, I believe somewhere, somehow, I believe that person still can have time. But in the instance that that person has failed. Mm. The church is there. Mm. These people, because in churches we have, uh, we have people who can speak to children. Mm. We speak to children, mm. especially in holidays. We speak to them. We tell them what they are supposed to do mm. and what they are not supposed to do. Mm. So it would be a very great opportunity if parents can allow their children to go to church, mm. especially if they have a good relationship mm. with the leaders mm. in the church because you can easily call a pastor or an elder in the church has my son arrived at church what has happened such that this child is accountable when he goes back home mm. the parent will ask what did you learn at church mm. and so on like that mm. but again as a parent i always urge parents Please create time. Mm. Parents, create time for your children. Mm. However busy you may be, mm. you must create time because a parent speaks to the heart mm. of a child. Mm. That child may look as though he has not heard what you said, but at some point, X in time, they reflect on They you. will reflect on what you told mm. them. Yes. So a parent, however busy that parent must be or may be, he or she should have time mm. for his or her child. Now, uh, the family is about bringing up uh, this kid and giving them uh, fellowship and instruction and uh, uh, providing for them uh, or for the life needs that they may have, school fees. And mm. But today, a lot of people are crying about poverty and are impoverished and uh, a few things that actually make them a parent to, to their kids they're not able to have them mm. how is the church coming into this picture we teach people the principles mm. the principles that god has put in place mm. and if somebody can follow these principles Poverty, because poverty is not our portion mm. as children of God. Exactly. It isn't. Poverty is not our portion. Mm. Poverty is like a stranger. Mm. A stranger who, who some, could be somebody who was passing by mm. 
and then rammed into your house. Mm. So that is how poverty, that's how I treat poverty. Mm. Poverty is not a portion. Poverty is a stranger. So if a stranger comes, he should not be there permanently. It may be for some time, but as a child of God, you must get, you must dip yourself in the word of God to find out these principles which can take you out of poverty. Mm. Because, in fact, much of the problems we are facing in our country or in our society, the root cause also, part of it is poverty. Mm. Yes, poverty is, is taking up a very big role to damage our society. Okay. But in the Bible, there are principles which we teach people, mm. like working. Working is a blessing. Mm. Working is a blessing. So in a family, uh, we, 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 we always tell parents, and we tell young people, you must work. Mm. Because work is a blessing. Mm. Work is ministry. Mm. Yes, mm. you cannot do ministry when you're not working. Mm. Yes, it is very, very important. Wow. Yes. And uh, there's something that I would love to ask you. Mm. You have taught the principle of fantastic. Mm. And the government has come up with uh, a few uh, projects, if I may call them, to help address especially this problem we're talking about poverty. Mm. Uh, wealth creation. Mm. And uh, away from teaching the biblical principle, is the church also embracing such programs? And are you preparing uh, the, the, the followers to implement uh, projects that will help them come out of poverty? Yeah, now in church, mm. what we're doing, we are organizing people mm. because a church is an organized entity mm. so in church what we do we we try to make groups mm. we make groups we have different associations women association youth associations and so on where youths come together or parents come together or women come together because they have their own their yeah, own yes. challenges so yeah. they come together so we encourage them to work in groups. Mm. And we also, we have been inviting, uh, we invite people whom God has blessed mm. with wisdom uh, to, 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 to talk to, to our members mm. in church. Mm. So I also want to encourage other pastors to do it mm. because, you know, uh, if, people, if people get to hear uh, to hear from these people who have succeeded, mm. I believe they also get a kind of challenge. Mm. They get a challenge mm. uh, such that they can also work on themselves, mm. yes, to improve. Does this also imply to other, uh, other areas of life, like now it has been poverty, and the successful families? Do you get successful parents to come and talk to other parents that you think need that kind of wisdom to, 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 to get to them? Yes, we have, okay, what we usually do, mm. we, we have marriage seminars mm. where we bring people who can speak to married people, mm. to couples, mm. yes, to, to instruct them in the word of God, mm. how to go about with their families. So we, we do that, mm. we do that in church wow. because, because without that, as you said, what is happening in the in the in the secular world, mm. even in the even in church, mm. we have young parents. Of course. Yes. <laughs> Some of them came to church when they are orphans, mm. but now they've grown up, mm. they are ready for marriage. Mm. So we have to prepare them. Mm. Yes. We have singers in families. Wow, you mentioned <laughs> singers, I love that. <laughs> yes. We have singers in yes. families, mm. I mean in churches. Yes. So they can speak to these people. Wow. Today we have a lot of exposure to mm. the media, mm. and uh, I've seen, especially the secular media, highlight a few values that probably are not so family-based and uh, family-oriented and wouldn't promote the kind of uh, uh, values we are talking about. Mm. So I was going to ask now, how do you help such a situation? Because even your church members are exposed to, to exactly, such media. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we have, we have forums mm. where we invite these young people. Uh, yes. We speak to them. Mm. We call a spade a spade and a knife a knife, mm. yes. Mm. Uh, although we can't do that uh, 
in an open place, mm. but there is a time when we say that now this is time to to hit the to nail hit. on the head. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah. this. Yeah. yeah. Now we our time is actually running out, but uh, from what we've just spoken about, I know someone uh, watching us from that end is identifying with what we're speaking about, mm -hmm. and I believe at such a moment. A word of prayer would be very appropriate Wonderful. to collect our thoughts and also get ourselves before God to mm. ask him to come and intervene in the kind of situation I okay. mentioned. So Good. I would uh, request Pastor Kaweke, uh, Richard Moses, to actually pray for our viewer and uh, put them in the hands of God. I want us to pray and uh, I believe that God answers prayers. We want to pray for families and people who are struggling outside there. But the major remedy to all the vices and all the problems we are, going to th we are going through is accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you can accept Jesus Christ in your heart, he is going to make a way where there is no way. But let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I want to thank you for our viewers. I want to thank you for that man, for that woman, for that young boy, young girl who is struggling in life. I pray, Lord, that by your spirit, Lord, touch the life of that young man. Touch the life of that young woman. Help those families which are struggling. Help that young man who is finding life very difficult, especially those people who feel that they are at the end of the world. They feel they even want to commit suicide. I refuse that demon of suicide. I break it in the name of Jesus. Father, I speak life. I speak success. I speak deliverance in the lives of your people that they will rejoice in you forever. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you very much, Pastor. You're welcome. Okay. You're welcome. God Uncle bless. Nick, and may God bless you God too. God bless you too. Amen. Yes. Amen. I hope you had a great time with myself and Pastor Kaweke, and I believe you identify with what we had to talk about this evening. That prayer takes us to the right place, and I, go, I believe God will intervene and make things better. From me, Prince Nick, my producer, Mr. Owino, and the entire production crew, and UBC. We wish you a good evening and have a nice week. God bless you. God bless you. <laughs>